Uh, I welcome Katie Neves into the studio, photographer and trans ambassador. We. Could- Good morning, Jack. Yeah. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> All right, thanks. Yeah, bit uh, bit blown around on this blustery day today. I know. I well done for getting here. Well, I tell you, it's on days like this that I'm glad I don't wear a wig anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be running down the road chasing after it, wouldn't I? <laughs> that would be a sight. Um... It's happened before. <laughs> That's another story. Uh, you've, you've, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for coming in, like I said, early on, on what is a pretty horrendous day. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to have a proper look into the papers after half seven. Um, but give us a little taster of the kind of th- uh, kind of stories that are doing the rounds today. Well, I've just looked back over the week and caught some, s- found some stories that have caught my eye. I want to start off with Philip Schofield. Um, so that, that's a big story at the moment. Shouldn't be, but it is. Um, and then I want to talk about the um, uh, David Car- Cameron's bodyguard or ex-bodyguard now. <laughs> Um, and then there's also a report that was in the Hinkley Times about um, uh, children being treated with uh, for, for gender uh, identity, uh, gender identity clinics uh, in Leicestershire. Uh, and then there's one about um, a girl who was uh, uh, who actually won a payout uh, for um, uh, for her hair that um, for um, a school uh, banned her from wearing, you know, having Afro hair. Um, and then I've got uh, got a nice story to finish with about uh, a man who ordered a dinosaur, but I won't say any more about that until later. He ordered a dinosaur. He ordered a dinosaur, as you do. <laughs> I cannot wait to hear about that. You touched very briefly on Philip Schofield, and we will mm. um, we will come on to that. And like I said, we'll talk to it, uh, talk about it a bit more in depth. But for people who maybe haven't heard you before, because you've done this with Joe in the past, mm. um, obviously it's a, it's a story that's you know potentially quite close to your heart. Give us a little bit of a background on you. Well, when when I I saw him sort of coming out. Um, yeah, I'm. You know, I did the same thing. So basically, I, I've been a photographer and filmmaker for 33 years. But two years ago, I came out very publicly as being transgender after living for 48 years as a man. Um, so I now have a new business as a trans ambassador, which runs alongside my photography and video business. So I help companies with their diversity and inclusion um, by you know, to, to protect them from being sued, basically for discrimination by doing trans awareness training and public speaking and media appearances. So so it's it's sort of it's it's amazing when I came out um, so publicly. So I came out by having a by doing a, um, a coming out video, which I put on my social media and I, I sent to all my clients. Um, and I was so worried at the time, you know, what the reaction would be because um, my whole livelihood, my reputation, everything was re- resting on it. And I was just so amazed at, at the love and support that I got and the the messages of support. It was just absolutely incredible. And I didn't do any work for three days because I was rep- replying to all these <laughs> lovely messages. It was just incredible. So often the the fear of coming out is a lot worse than the, the actuality of it. Loads of great stories, including that one to talk to Katie mm. about after half seven. Okay? Not heard that in ages. Natasha Bedingfield and these words on BBC Radio Leicester, 23 minutes to eight. And it's time to take a proper look uh, at the news, you know, a little bit of a look at the papers today, but also stories that have been around in the week. Trans ambassador Katie Neves rejoins me in the studio. Um, Katie, we were talking a little bit before. Um, a big story this week, which, like you say, actually... It's a, it's sort of a shame that it is still a big story, but Philip Schofield uh, coming out this week. Yeah, it, it was just uh, I, I I was actually in tears actually when I saw him um, coming out he, because it, you could see how awkward he he was and you could see where he was digging his nails into his hand and you know he, he was just he 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 was really frightened of, of of what the reaction would be and it's just such a shame in 2020 that this is happening that somebody has to go out there very publicly and and come out like this. I mean, surely. It doesn't matter. I mean, my, my my first reaction when I heard the news was, well, so what? Mm. I mean, you know, the only people it affects is him and his family, his very close family, you know, particularly his wife. You know, but but you know, there shouldn't be a need. This shouldn't be a story, but it is, and, and it is a massive story. It's, it's all over the papers yesterday, and, and on the news, it's all over there still today. It's going to rumble on for a bit. Um, but it's just crazy, isn't it? <laughs> do you do you think it, it is? I mean. It's hard to say because it is still, unfortunately, a big deal when mm. celebrities come out and feel that they need to come out. Do you think it's a bigger deal because he was married for so long and has grown up daughters? Uh, yeah, possibly. But I mean, it, it takes time for people to 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 accept and come to terms with things. It was the same with me being trans. I'm saying, I mean, I lived as a man for 48 years, and before I admitted to myself that I was trans, and you know, so it's. It, is one of those things that you nobody wants, nobody chooses to be gay or chooses to be trans. It's just something that you are, but it it can take a while. And and I think it's purely because of the um, the the effects of of 
you know, public opinion and I mean luckily it's changing now and it's sort of going you know people are becoming much more accepting but but you know when you think about it like like I mean I would say I'm 50 now so when I was I was growing up in the 70s um you know if someone came out as gay that was a real scandal mm. um and nobody spoke about trans stuff then but you know so now it's becoming that much better but there's still a stigma there and so it still that still has to be overcome and it's that pressure that's put on the person that they don't want to admit to themselves that they are gay or trans or whatever um so i, I just I, I really really did feel for him and and also you know labels are just so overrated i mean you know he sort of wants to or has to sort of put his label on him as gay or whatever it doesn't i mean labels sh surely shouldn't matter you know people love people and surely that's a good thing and it doesn't really matter what uh, what sexuality they have or gender or whatever just people are people and people love people and yeah that should be celebrated surely um as somebody yourself who who has you know had um you know come out shall we say later on in life yeah. you know you weren't you know a 20 year old kid when no. you came out as no. trans philip schofield similar situation guy mm. in his 50s and um, making this announcement what sort of as somebody who's been through it yourself, what sort of difficulties and, and emotions do you think he'd have been going through the you sort of oh. days and weeks leading up to it? Oh, years probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, because the thing is, he, you know, I mean, obviously it was a, it's, it's a bigger deal for him because he's so famous. I mean, he's far <laughs> better known than I am, but, you know, um, he, but even for me on, on the smaller scale for me, I, I you know, being, um, being a freelance photographer, um, I wasn't protected by an, any anti-discrimination laws um, by my work because I was self-employed. And if my clients had a problem with it, they would just walk away and the phone would stop ringing. And and so, you know, when I came out, you know, doing my, my coming out video and everything, it was it was um, my whole livelihood and my whole reputation lay on it. And it's the same with him. And, you know, he he would have that pressure on him because you know he's you know he's a very well known um celebrity and you know presenter and and very very good at his job but he he'd obviously be worried about the effect on his on his livelihood and his reputation um so all of that would be going through his mind you know and and he's probably built it up far bigger than it needed to be mm. and he probably put a lot more pressure and you could see how awkward he felt you know when holly was reading out um the um uh, the statement that he put out on instagram and it was quite a long statement and she was reading it and i, I just i really did feel for him um we'll move on to, to another story shortly but i think one person who i mean i think what's been great is that there seems to be overwhelming support and love for him online and mm. he's spoken very highly about uh his wife and two daughters and the support they've offered him um but one uh, person who did get a little bit of criticism was Eamon Holmes for the joke that he made. I don't know if you saw about this. He he said something along the lines of, "Oh, I wondered how you could be in a hot tub with Holly Willoughby and and not get excited or something to that effect." I mean, what did you make of that? No, I thought Eamon. I thought Eamon, I thought he was. I think he was right to make that joke because it it sort of it was it lightened it at the end, and I think. Eamon was being very professional and and as a presenter, um, and because it was a very heavy sort of subject, and 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 so it just lightened it at the end, and it just it just eased it for Philip, and I think it was actually right to to actually make a joke at the end. Um, I, I think I th I, know I don't I don't see anything wrong with with what he said at all. I, I'm fully back him. More from Katie very shortly, but here's the jam. The Jam and Going Underground on BBC Radio Leicester. I'm joined in the studio by trans ambassador Katie Neves, who is uh, reviewing the news for us. And now, uh, Katie, I'm I'm one of these people, I'm quite bad for leaving things lying around. I'll often be halfway to the car park here and I'll realise I've left my keys here in the studio. Um, I've never left anything that dangerous lying around. <laughs> Somebody is going to get a slap on the wrist, I think. Well, I think probably more than a slap <laughs> on the wrist. Yeah, there's a, there's a story this week... Uh, um, <laughs> about uh, David Cameron's bodyguard, or uh, probably ex-bodyguard by now, <laughs> but uh, he left his revolver 
in <laughs> in the loos of an aeroplane, um, you know, in its holster. But also, as well as that, he left his passport and David Cameron's passport with it. And you know, he obviously took it off while he was uh, going to the loo, and that, <laughs> and then he left. <laughs> and of course, then the, the poor person who came in afterwards then found this thing and then then went to report it. And then the the crew tried to eject that person because they thought that person <laughs> it was their gun oh, and my it wasn't. Word. And, so, and I just feel I feel so sorry for them. I feel, I actually feel sorry for the bodyguards. I mean, it just it's such a crushing blow because you know he must be one of the top bodyguards to to get that job of guarding David Cameron and and, and um, you know he's probably finished his career doing that. I should imagine because it's you know, probably one of the like number one cardinal sin of, of being a bodyguard. <laughs> don't, don't leave your gun in the in the in the, in the toilet. Um. <laughs> but I, I'm one of these people, right? That um, I feel like I mean I've never held a gun, so mm. I don't really know. But I feel like with me, I'd be constantly like nervous about it. Like, say if I've got tickets in my pocket mm. and they're just loose in my pocket, I'm spending all day checking yeah. they're in there and worried, you yeah. know, of the state of them. With a revolver, I'd be constantly <laughs> like, "Is the safety on? Yes, the safety's on. Is the safety on?" How do you just forget that? Well, I don't know. I mean, it was loaded as well. So, I mean, it could have... Yeah, I mean, if, if you know, somebody could have picked up and, and the thing could have gone off. I mean, it could have ended really, really badly. I mean, this has ended up in a bit of embarrassment and, you know, and, a, and a, say, a slap wrist or a bit more for the, for the guy involved. But, you know... <laughs> just, yeah, I mean, you would, wouldn't you? But, I mean, it's just a... I suppose it's one of those things. It's... Yeah, the, the, I, I should imagine that the bodyguard is very, very experienced. Probably been doing it for years, and it's just be, so. So they would have been much more relaxed about um, about having the fact that it's a revolver. Yeah, you or I would think, oh, it's a revolver. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they'd be handling it all the time. So I suppose it's one of those things you get used to. But yeah, it's it's not not great, is it? But I thought, well, David Cameron can't really sort of uh, tell people off about forgetting things because uh, <laughs> if you remember back in two thousand and twelve, he accidentally left his daughter. His eight-year-old daughter in a pub after lunch, and he only returned fifteen minutes later to pick her up. So he can't. He hasn't really got any room to sort of tell him off, has he? Yeah, I, I think that would be my comeback if I was if I was the the bodyguard. And you said, "How could you forget that?" Well, well David, your daughter. <laughs> um, uh, moving on, uh, we obviously we've discussed the fact that you are a trans ambassador, and there's quite an interesting story in one of the local papers this week. Yeah, this is a story that was in the Hinkley Times that I saw. Um, it's, it's it's basically it's um, there's been um, uh, 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 so, some some data that's found out that um, the number of children from Leicestershire who've been treated uh, at gender identity clinics, um, apparently um, 28 children from Leicestershire are currently being treated um, at the Tavistock and Portman NHS Foundation Trust, um, which runs the Gender Identity Development Service, and it's based in, in London and Leeds. Um, and it's something, I mean, it's 28 doesn't sound much, but that doesn't show... You know how many are actually on the waiting list as well? Because I mean, nationally there are two thousand nine hundred forty-two children aged seventeen and below um, who are being treated by them. Um, so it's it, it's a it's a it's a big thing. Um, it's quite a contentious issue, isn't it? The, it is. the with with young children and 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 trans and as somebody who's been through it in later life, what what is your thoughts on it? Is do you you know is it should it be celebrated that it you know it, we can do this earlier in life or is it something that that parents should sort of I don't know it's it's hard to hard to say what what do you make of the numbers? Um, well. In terms of the numbers, that I mean, the numbers are what they are. I mean, I think the numbers are, are deceptive because the waiting lists are so long. There yeah. are so many children and so many adults actually waiting, waiting for to be treated as well. I mean, it's just the, the NHS trans health care is just broken in this country. It really is. It's just not functioning as it yeah. should be. Um, but there is uh, also um, the, the, uh, the, 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 the the guidelines set out by the World Professional Association for Transgender Health, so WPATH, um, advises affirmative care, which means um, actually allowing the child to explore their true gender rather than take more of a sort of questioning approach, which is the way that the Tavistock um, Centre um, chooses to, to approach it. So there's a bit of a mismatch there. And, 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 and so they're actually going against the rest of the world in the way they do it. And so, the, and also then, then after doing that, then there's a very long wait before they're actually allowed to, to have um, puberty blockers as well. Um, but when you actually see, when you actually see each other, I mean, I've got friends who've got trans children and you actually see, when, and the parents are absolutely brilliant and they're so supportive and you actually see the child, uh, you know, being allowed to explore their true gender. They're just, 
so much happier for some from where they've been depressed and sort of you know just 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 you, you just see them they're like a shadow of a child when they're actually allowed to be the true selves they blossom they come to life and and you can just see the difference and it it it, I'd say to any critic who is saying, "Oh, you shouldn't be treating children," just you know, meet one, meet one, and see them, and you'll see for yourself. You know, they, they're so much happier; they really are. It's so wonderful that th- this is possible in 2020, mm. and that it's been discussed, and that you know the steps that have been made. There's still plenty to go, but the steps that have been made is fantastic. And it's much. I think it's a topic we could and should delve a lot deeper in. Absolutely. We only have about 30 seconds left and we have to discuss this final story very quickly because it's too hilarious not to. Well, it is. It is. It's um, it's a a dad ordered a 19 foot Carnotaur statue um, for his dinosaur mad son. (laughs) Um, But but, um, it was amazing. It was so big. It was far bigger than he thought it was going to be. Um, So it had to be brought into his garden by a massive crane. (laughs) I mean, it's just, it's, like, it's one of those things like, like the first law of, you know, sort of life is you know, never order anything on eBay when you're drunk. You know? <laughs> I love the idea that maybe he thought it was like a, a toy or maybe, you know, maybe as big as his kid or something, 19 foot. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean it, he must have known that it was quite a size because, I mean, it cost him a thousand pounds. So, yeah, you, it must have been. <laughs> Dads of Leicestershire, you have competition for Dad of the Year. Um, Katie, we've run out of time, sadly. Thank you so much for coming in. No problem at all. You're welcome.